on the last day of the conference, Steiner was asked if this world of education is more or less for Germany, more or less for a German situation. And he said, not at all. Not at all, this is pure education, pure pedagogy. And you can adopt, adapt it to all external conditions. It can be introduced in every school, into all school in the wide world of tomorrow. He said on this last day of the conference. So under different conditions in a lot of cultures, but also in conditions where not the whole of Waldorf School is possible or allowed, legal, but elements, and you don't have to go to dictatorships. He said, here in Switzerland, we will never have many Waldorf schools because they are proud of their state schools because they are free from religion. So they think a free school is free from religion and they are proud of their good Swiss schools. But Steiner said, it's no problem. Bring as much anthroposophy into the Swiss schools. That's fine. And maybe you will have one or two Waldorf schools to show what the method is valid. But don't resignate if not the full image is possible. Try to be always in harmony with the situation in which you live. The body in movement, when we walk, when we go, there we find our destiny in walking, in directing our steps here or there. Beyond our consciousness, we find our destiny and afterwards we can recognize it. So what comes first from the human being is the highest. It's the walking, it's the body in movement, but it's the spirit. And what comes then later, the thinking, when we have the separation here, there, this is really linked to the body, to the brain, and then we are in the images of the natural world, of the, of the bodily world. So it's really, yeah, you, you feel this uh, two opposite uh, movements here. A little bit more about now morality and religious support for development. So how how can we how can we support this? Well, we have first to consider to reconsider this fundamental ability of the small child. We all know it expresses itself in this double gesture to be completely open to the world like a sense organ. Second characteristic, it resonates warmly, it engages warmly with his will to what he perceived. Openness and uh, imitation will warm activity. We had this in the very first lecture. He said this in some point, in other words. Huh? So, how it is now with moral education and religious education? Well, it's exactly, it goes in the same way. It's not about what you are talking to the child. It's not what the feelings you want him uh, uh, to express through your words with, will, which will touch him. No, which will touch the child is your being. If you really have yourself, um, if religious attitude, if love and longing for relationship 
and longing to connect to higher worlds if this really lives in you. And then if this penetrates your actions, then it acts to the child. He says, well, the teacher must bring into school, I'm not quoting now, a spiritual breathing to be able to communicate with children, a spiritual breathing. A spiritual breathing, and breathing consists on inhalating and exhalating. And how we can do that? Well, he says, this is only through humor. And he says, of course, it's very important to acquire seriousness, but just seriousness, not gigantic seriousness. <laughs> he says that, you know, after speaking about gratitude in the most deep way, about speaking of this awakening of love, now he brings this breathing. We need to breathe, inhalate, exhalate, only possible through humor. And of course we need to be very earnest and serious, of course. But to breathe with the children, we need to have not a gigant, a gigant seriousness. He says, the seriousness can already be there, but not the gigantic seriousness. And the spiritual inhalation consists in humor, in the humor to which everything gives rise in the classroom and elsewhere where one has the opportunity to be together with the person being educated and thought. And now, <clears throat> for us, the only obstacle that can be there to the development of humor can only be the teacher. No. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it is certainly not the children and it's certainly not all that one has to teach if one places it correctly in this phase of life. Isn't in it interesting? He is performing that what he's speaking about. So he's really speaking about the highest virtues, but even there, breathe, breathe. And you are the only obstacle for that. <laughs> Because the children, they love to laugh. And the things in the world, they really are full of humor. Well, but now he goes back. 